computer. There we go. All right, recording. Okay, there's a, uh, a meeting with Department of Ed um, on Monday with the attorney about non-renewals and, um, I said it great the first time, non-renewals and uh, teachers uh, um, being laid off and such. So I'm gonna hear more information about that on Monday. And then Tuesday, I have a one o'clock with the commissioner and hopefully we'll have all our budget ducks in a row by that time so that people know how to proceed as far as evaluation and stuff. So, oh, so can I stop you? So how is the meeting on Monday? How is that going to alter anything? What do you hope to do? I don't think it's going to alter anything for us, to be honest with you. I think it's just as far as I think for people that are going to be evaluated out type thing, Mary. Okay. Um, it doesn't affect budget too, too much. But I just wanted to, as far as, um, like, for example, if somebody's um, non-renewal status ends April 15th, Monday is the 12th. That doesn't give them much time. We happen to have the, you know, May 1st in our contract. So, so it's not going to affect us too much. But I'm just interested in hearing, hearing what he has to say about, about that. Because I also know that teachers are worried about, um, you know, about evaluation and how that's going to work as well. So that's something that, you know, um, I'd like to hear what they have to say as well. I so, thought we weren't going to do any evaluations. I thought everybody was just sort of as, as they are. I thought that was a decision that was made. Initially, that's what we'd all said. I don't think it's going to change at all. I think the bigger issue is if, if you're going to not renew somebody because of evaluation. Okay. Yep. It is what, what it is. So I think that's really what this, is, this conversation is going to be about. Okay. And that's just union employees? Anybody who's a union employee, I would say. Anybody who's, that's an evaluative employee. So that's pretty much everybody that custodians evaluated assistants are very everybody should be evaluated okay. so so that's how that goes do we have any updates on retirements um we're already i don't think anything new right uh carol oh i don't know that that's public i'm i think it is i'm not sure she told every building yet okay well are we keeping that <laughs> Um, okay. but, but so virtually everybody that we had before. Yeah. Okay. So we don't know about M, uh, Wallace. Oh, so, uh, we might know. Exactly. About that. Some of these things we might have information. <laughs> I mean, we have a little more information, but they're not I, official I, yet. I'm not, I, I, yeah, I'm not sure what we had a conversation. I don't know if all of everything is submitted the way it needs to be. For Correct. To be Correct. Okay. And the two definites are the gym teacher at the high school. And the eighth and grade um, science teacher. Science teacher. Yep. Okay. Why do I feel like there's another one? Hmm. It was somebody else. Yeah. There was another one. Oh, Jean. Oh, Jeannie in, in central office. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, so Donna's already retired. And one of the things we will, we should think about is what we do for, our retirees um, last year, the school committee um, invited them to attend a school committee meeting and gave them, I believe, a crystal apple. Um, Colleen Moore, I think, set that up. Um, Colleen, I don't know if, if you have records of that, but we should think of doing something for the folks um, who will be leaving us. Apple? I don't know why we did what we did. I wasn't involved. But, um, but just some form of recognition, I think, would be. I agree. Would yeah. be appropriate. Again, that might have to wait till summer. I don't even know what this rollout's going to look like when school is. Right. If it if it did, it comes back in session. I can't imagine they'll just say, "Okay, everybody, go back where they need to be." I'd imagine there's going to be some sort of 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 little rollout, right. um, a gradual rollout. So. You know, some of these activities, I, I know people are worried about, you know, having the school open up and having some kind of closure with the students. You know, that might be happy to happen in the summertime. Um, so, and, and again, it may be May 4th. I don't know. It may be June 1st. I don't know. But at, at some point, a lot of these activities are going to be definitely put on hold. Graduation may have to be in the summer. I, I just don't know. A lot of unknowns right now. And I don't think we're going to know the May 4th until at least after April vacation, to be honest with you. I can't imagine it be before that. So that's that. So the good news is that the, the budget will stay as is for now. Um, and Mike, Mike Guzzo said he's, he's okay with that. Um, if there's some issues he's thinking about perhaps, um, you know, doing something in the fall. But again, I reiterate to him, we can't do that in the fall because our budget depends on a lot of salaries. 
and I'm not sure we would cut it. So he told us to, you know, keep the school budget as is. And Greg also conveyed that same thing, the town administrator, we've already asked us to go down to the bare bones and we have. So at this point, it would just really impact staffing if we have to go down any further. But again, town meeting's not gonna happen until June 30th. So this all could change July 1st. Right depending on what the town decides and, and the revenue. I mean, we're not gonna know what the revenue for the town is until this, this crisis is over. And it may not show up until October because right now the fourth quarter is not till July. Right. So, so talking about the rest of um, the 20, uh, 2020 budget, that, that's just, I know I saw a freeze or something, which, yeah. But so nothing that we have to worry about right now with that either. Just I'll have Irene talk about that, no. Irene, you wanna take yourself off mute? Still on mute. <laughs> Does Colleen have to take her off? Yeah, Colleen, yeah, Colleen took others off. It's giving me trouble. I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so, okay. So, so what we're talking about. There, we go. Here she is. there we go. We can hear. I can't hear anybody now. <laughs> it's getting in the background. Yeah, we can't. We just all we see is a big planet. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what it says. <laughs> you can't see what it says. I think we're in good shape for the budget. <laughs> yesterday, something about yesterday. Died. What did died? Oh, microphone died yesterday. Oh, oh. got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> I was like, who died so, yesterday? <laughs> yes. So the budget, she can put, you can put it in, um, yeah, which anyway, my understanding is the budget is in good shape right now. Right, Irene? We're good? We're good. We did order another 100 Chromebooks. Next. Need chat function. <laughs> need the chat function, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what she's looking for, the chat. Oh, there function. we go. It's there. That was me. So we had already put a freeze in place um, yep. previously. Um, the last report that Irene gave us at our um, admin meeting was that we're looking to be on target. Um, and um, oh, she's gonna put some information in now. So we're looking to be on target. We are having, as she mentioned at the last school committee meeting, some savings, but it's minimal um, due to the closure. So um, yeah, open is good. we should be okay. She said, yes, general fund is good. I know that we ordered a couple hundred, uh, another hundred. Oh, here we go. Revolving accounts on the other hand. Yeah, so part of getting through the rest of this year was, um, and this is something that Michelle and Irene have worked on um, in the transition, we're gonna be using a significant portion of our revolving accounts in order to, to stay um, in the black this year. Um, that part of that was known um part of it was not yeah. and i guess the food service and the excel um which makes sense because those are the revenue that we are not getting right um to see how the how that's gonna work out um yeah yeah um those and are gonna i, be did, challenging. I did talk to mike and he said you know we'll do what we have to do but what we have to do now is he said make sure that we keep a running account and and uh really document what we have. And if we continue to document it, then, you know, if we do get some relief that they can, they can push that over to us. Um, but really just make sure that we keep everything documented. Do not create any lines for these budgets. Just document what we have. We don't want it to go in there. Uh, facilities rental, again, she's <laughs> talking about that. Um, we're losing money on facilities rental, so we're not able to collect that money either. So and that, I think it'll be important to note that if we are not able to have rentals in our buildings this summer, we're losing between fifty and sixty thousand dollars from College Gate, um, and that money was always um, put into uh, maintenance. So that's an important one for us to know about and have on our radar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how what the summer program is going to look like. To be honest with you. Right. I, I am very concerned with summer school, um, the preschool, the Excel program, and the college gate. I, I just I just don't know even how to move forward with that right now. Um, so Excel, I think, is 
is a little easier because it's generally that's that's a, a you know service for families and so if, if she doesn't open she just wouldn't be staffing um, her people um, you know in terms of special education services and and summer school for our at-risk students um, you know we're gonna have to figure that out if if we do remain outside of school buildings throughout the summer um, additionally the again the in terms of college gate that is you know, the only reason we really care about it is that it's revenue for for our maintenance lines uh, and it's significant it, it's a significant amount of revenue um so we're gonna have to keep an eye on that okay i don't know if i have anything else that um i'm interested do we want to what are you guys interested in discussing What is on mute? They're both on mute. She should be able to unmute herself now. Yeah. Okay. There oh, we, there go. we go. Okay. Um, um, yes, yeah. I want to know where we are in terms of the 10 month and 12 month principals at Green Meadow. Uh, well, actually, all three buildings. No, nothing has happened yet at this point. Okay. Um, I know that Brian is interested in, in bringing another um, principal on at the Green Meadow. Um, I have a meeting on Monday with um, other principals um, to discuss that at one o'clock. So um, that's where we are um, on that. Um, it's supposed to be at two today, but uh, it's at one o'clock tomorrow. Um, but I know Brian is interested in having two principals at Green Meadow, and I know that's something we're trying to work out right now, because right now we only have the one 12-month principal at, the high, at Green Meadow. Correct. Correct. So if we were to hire a second, it would be for a 10-month position, correct? If yep. we were to hire a second, regardless of where that funding is coming from, it would be for 10 months. The the you know, and I, I want to stop saying the two principal model is built off of a 12 and 10 month. Our administrative model is built off of a 12 okay. and a 10 month position. So even if we were to have principal assistant principal, it would be a 12 month position and a 10 month position. Um, so if we were to have that second person, it would be at a 10 month component um, based on um, we were looking at potentially using revenue from the Student Opportunity Act. Um, we were hoping we were going to get preschool revenue, but it's not looking like we have enrollment for that to occur. And then there was additional um, funding in professional development that we thought we could shift over and have this second person be um, essentially the literacy early learning uh, director right. uh, yeah. is I think yeah. what we were, we, we had a bunch of different titles, but essentially it would be an administrative position really responsible for overseeing early learning um literacy development and things of that nature but with could also evaluate right but could also evaluate um we had talked about potentially doing instead of doing you know a principal of leadership and operations and a principal of curriculum instruction that all oversee all buildings could we do a pre-k one and then a two three um you know so one principal oversees pre-k and one uh kindergarten and one and the one oversees the second and third grade um academic component um with the expertise in the background who forgive me i don't remember the gentleman's name that we hired um Rulo, robert Rulo. so he his background is in math and science and so if we posted specifically for a literacy um skill set then we're going to you know encompass encompass them both um you know i i think I think that it, it's worth us looking at again unfortunately again the preschool revenue that we were hoping was going to come in that would help to create the funding for this position isn't going to be there um, other districts have done things like create um, teaching principals or principal coaches or other different ways that you adjust the schedule of a staff member so that you know, they have some responsibility within classroom spaces, but then a portion of their day is carved out for administrative functionality. Um, I'll be honest, uh, I, I know how to do that at a secondary level, but at an elementary level where it's generally one classroom per person, um, it's a little more challenging. So we can look at different models in that capacity um, 
and, and we're continuing to explore that. Um, we also did do the survey, the community and staff survey regarding the Student Opportunity Act to determine, you know, what, because that was required. Yep. Yeah. Um, with this funding and you know what what do people feel that are prior to priorities um, yeah, what was that? The, what was the main, I can pull up the specific data but the main um, priorities let me I don't want to get it wrong so let me pull that up and I will tell you exactly um, god my room is freezing I just turned the heat on I'm not probably not supposed to do that but I did <laughs> Yeah, so I, I mean, that's something I'm, I'm really, uh, really trying to figure out how we're going to put this, this other administrator in. Um, it's just, uh, it's going to be a tricky situation. Um, we, could we keep Tim, and it's just throwing it out, could we keep Tim for any longer, like two or three extra months, just to, so that we have time to let the dust settle in that? Or has anybody thought about that? Or is that? Yeah, I've asked him possible. before if he wants to stay on, and he said that he wanted to spend time with his grandchild. So yeah, I, I would say no on that as well. Okay, not even two, you know, not a full year, but I was just thinking just a couple of months until. I mean, I I can ask, but I don't even know if the funding is going to be there. To be honest with you, Mary, yeah. you know, and if you know what funding revenue, what source would he use to keep him there? You know, and that becomes the other issue. And I think the other piece is that we do have one principal who has been hired. So Rob, Robert, and um, the principals can transition um, once you know we figure out what our our end of year looks like. Like he will be able to transition as well. Um, I think probably had we not had the school closure crisis in the way that we did, um, that transition plan would look a lot clearer at this point. Um, but we're not, that, uh, to be honest, it hasn't even crossed my radar <laughs> to talk about that, um, which is odd because usually after about, you know, February, all I'm focused on is the following year. Um, so from our um, community survey, the um, highest priority was supporting educators to implement high quality aligned curriculum. And then the second highest was research-based early literacy programs in pre-K um, in early elementary grades. Um, that was echoed in our um, teacher survey as well, um, but I believe there was an additional component in terms of, um, it, it was higher in um, supporting the educator implement high quality aligned curriculum for our educator survey. So in thinking through what um, what that means, you know, the how do we support teachers in implementing high quality curriculum? That is through, you know, the coaching and the supervision and evaluation model, you know, component. Um, so that would justify um, the the allocation of expenditures into additional um, positions to be able to do that at the elementary level um, if we're cutting those. And then it also justifies the importance of the early literacy role of having someone who has sort of that that background, that expertise. Again, I think it's important as we're thinking about where we're putting, um, what kind of position we're putting in place. You know, we've talked a lot about instructional coaching, and while I believe instructional coaching is, is an incredibly important component. I think we need to think about instructional coaching more broadly than we have, and we really need to be looking at, a, as a, at our administrators and other people within our buildings as coaches as well. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, coaching really just means that you have someone who is helping you to improve your practice. And so if we can craft structures and relationships around different people to be able to do that, um, I think we'll be able to get more headway um, than perhaps we've seen from the, the coach's colleague model that we've had particularly for ELA. And again, that is no, you know, not trying to disparage anyone who is in that position. Um, you know, we've seen the data show two very different things about literacy coaching and math coaching at the elementary level. And it makes a lot of sense to me. We have a lot of teachers who are, their background is in literacy. And so the ability to receive coaching in that is very different when it's, that's your background, that's your bailiwick. Um, whereas the math, it's, you know, getting that hunger of, I'm not sure how to do this, right? Um, additionally, we had new programming that was going in place. Um, and so there was coaching around resources and things of that nature. I think our literacy review team um, will be, um, 
be able to provide us with a lot of good data around what areas we need to strengthen within our literacy program. And again, that won't be coming from sort of my office or the principal's office. That is a comprehensive K-12 team that is looking at all of our components. So there's gonna be some more buy-in in that capacity. I thought when we had, when we had the uh, literacy coach and the math coach down at Green Meadow, I thought the, the return on investment wasn't really there. Um, so the data showed very differently for the two different um, subject areas. Um, what we are seeing in terms of student improvement um, for literacy in particular, based on our student achievement data, and, and this is not comprehensive of all the data that we have, and these are kids, not numbers, and I think that's important to note. Um, but when we look at our student achievement data of MCAS and other pieces, what we're seeing for literacy is that the students who are receiving Title I services over time, not those individual students, but that cohort of students is improving and is improving their skills. What we're not seeing for literacy in particular is an overall improvement of um, students who are not receiving specialized instruction, whether it be through special education or Title I. Um, in math, differently though, we have seen an overall improvement, both for students who are in specialized groups and for students overall. Um, and so what that says to me is that what we're doing for Title I in literacy and math is working, um, and we wanna continue as best we can that model. Um, what it says to me in terms of where we need to focus our instructional coaching concept is we need to reframe what that looks like so that we're getting more academic return on investment um, for those coaching dollars. In participating in the multi-tiered system of support conferences across the state this year, um, there was a lot of conversation around coaching and what districts have done in order to successfully use those dollars, coaching dollars, in order to improve student um, performance and achievement. And essentially what it is is that reframe from a, you know, coaching is only when you have a coach who is a colleague that is non-evaluative to coaching means that there's someone who's helping me to improve my practice and developing the, the culture of continuous improvement within the building that says we are all learners and we are all getting better at this and who has the expertise in order to help me improve as a professional to help our students improve. There are other things too that we need to do. So one of them, for example, is we need to tie um, professional development evaluation of professional development directly to student outcomes. So in the past, we've evaluated professional development based on the perceptions of our staff as to whether they felt it was useful or meaningful. Um, and this seems really, may seem really, you know, simple and something that everyone you know, would just think of, but it was for all of us, it was oh, okay. So our professional development, when we design it, we need to figure out what student outcomes we expect as a result of it and then be able to track that. So it's not just the coaching component that we need to adjust, um, but in terms of our conversation here around the budget, I think that that's an important shift. Right, right. Okay. So, I know that we will be, um, we've already posted for the business manager position. So, so that's going, so that's going out. Um, well, I think I'm going to have the, um, and Brian will be included in, in, um, reviewing the potential candidates. Absolutely. Okay. I just had Colleen. Send I'm back out. on. Thank you. Oh, dear. <laughs> I was on, then I was off. Can I ask a question? Sure. Absolutely. Regarding the elementary assistant principal principalship at model, has anyone reached out to the new principal, Rob, to find out? And maybe you already have. And I oh, just that's know a it. good. Just what's his experience? What's his comfort level? Yeah. So again, uh, with this transition and sort of looking at this. Um, that would have been on our radar to do and just hasn't been. That That's has not fine. been the focus. Yeah, I, I <laughs> totally understand that. I haven't yeah. reached out to him either. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> No, but that's something, you know, what one of the things we were gonna do, Brian, just in terms of thinking through yeah. this, we wanted to get the data on the Student Opportunity Act um, and to figure out, okay, does it really make sense to spend those dollars in that place? You know, is that what our community is saying we need to do? Um, is that what our educators are saying we need to do? 
Um, and then to figure out, okay, how do we pay for it? You know, sort of what does that role entail? Um, and we had probably four or five different structures of what that position could be um, to really meet the needs of what, you know, what we see at Green Meadow specifically. Um, and like I said, knowing his background, one of the thoughts was, you know, does he oversee sort of math and science, but that would need to be a conversation with him. Uh, sure. For sure. Makes sense. And that's something we can do. We can probably zoom him into a meeting and, and, and work something out with him, to be honest with you. Michelle, I mean, Michelle, what is your name? Uh, Jennifer, myself. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we can even you. Um, okay. Now that we've got this remote learning plan kind of uh, ready to go on Monday, I think we'll have a little bit more time to now start moving forward on, you know, reopening the schools and what is it going to look like. But right now, it's really just been um, a lot of filling in the what we have to get done. Yeah, I think I after agree. We should be able to get more stuff together. So we can certainly sit down and we can have a meeting with me, you, Jennifer, and 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 Rob and see how he wants to move forward in that vein. Because maybe we could be a little more creative having another person's point of view in there. So that might, I'll definitely schedule something. Okay, great. When somebody's going for their master's um, in to become an administrator, do they have to do an internship? They do. Um, most of our teachers already have either their CAGS in leadership or they have their administrator, particularly in that building, their administrative certification. Um, interestingly, we have never seen, a, the, to my knowledge, and we've done several searches um, since I've been on board at that building, I don't think we've ever had an internal applicant. Um, so, but Jen, we've been doing principal searches um, or assistant principal searches. So if we were to reframe this in some sort of early learning literacy, we might get some people who are interested, um, you know, and I think that's, you know, that's something for us to consider as well. But we do have several teachers at Green Meadow who have their leadership certification. They don't even need to go through a program. Right. Um, so. Yeah. I know Katie Krasinski does. She does. I believe Melissa McPhail does. Um, I think there's several other people. After you've talked to Rob and got his take on it, would it makes would it be helpful to see if maybe we could create a model where they could be half teacher, half administrator, or is that like a nightmare? Like I said, I think um, this is where my secondary background is not helping. I know it's done in other buildings. I just don't know how you schedule the day because those kids need to have someone with them, right, for that day. So. Um, I think we would have I think talking to Rob would be great and reaching out to other districts that have those models in place to say you know what what is your structure look like how do you do that I mean one of the things we did think about in that capacity was could we have someone this is in a different vein than in the literacy but could we have someone who is working as a part-time guidance counselor this right. was before our budget piece but could we have someone who was a part-time guidance counselor and then a part-time dean of students right you know could you have those two roles and that that i can see and how it makes sense but again i do know other districts have teaching principals somehow and they, and they are freed up at some point during the day it's not just an, an extra piece after school um yeah. So we can, we can look at how that happens in other yeah, that places. was my idea, the guidance counselor slash helper uh, for the right. principal. Um, I'm not, you know, I, I still really would like that because that would really ensure that the kids are getting the social emotional supports they need, which is, you know, people are, are saying that that did come through in the survey. They're looking for some social emotional, additional social emotional supports for our students. So that would be certainly an option we'd like to do um, if that's the case. But uh, again, it's just another model we have to look at. I want, to say, yeah, I want to say ancient cool. history that Barbara Bergner did that years and years ago. Yeah. History. So I think we've, yeah, if you reach out to a couple of the older teachers, they might remember. And I think yeah. it worked well. So why, another thing right off topic, back to where we were talking about actual dollars and where we're losing uh, money and stuff. Was that what you were talking about, Mary Jane, about, about keeping a line item of all the places that we are losing revenue so that A, we can report that to the selectmen and just as importantly, report it to the state just so that they realize all the unintended consequences of our little district. No, it's really about what we're purchasing 
it, it, right now, as a result of the of the pandemic, for example, laptop or Chromebooks, you know, we actually had that in our budget for next year, but we have to do it ahead of schedule because, you know, we don't have grades four, grade seven without without Chromebooks. There's also students in the younger grades who are looking for them. So we're looking to purchase another hundred of those and that has not been allocated for. So something like that. Um, and uh, what else? I can't think unless Irene can think of something else that she could type in there. But I'm thinking items like that, things that come up that we hadn't anticipated. And again, it may even include, uh, you know, additional revenue for, I, I don't know, maybe an extra custodian or whatever it may be for cleaning or something like that. Yeah. Can we, can we also maybe start that list of all the things that you guys have even talked about just now of, you know, the pre-K, the college gate, all the different, the facilities yeah. rentals and that so that we can have that information available. So again, yeah. we can, we've got that while it's fresh in everybody's mind and maybe this is where Irene can come in and just, just start as you think of things, you know, just, just start that calculated list because that'll definitely help us in, I think, more than one way. Yeah, I think that's important. I actually hadn't thought about the college gate. I'm glad Jennifer brought that up. So I, you know, I forgot about the revenue stream for that, to be honest with you. So I think the more that we could put down and, and have it be proactive. Um, I, I do think, um, you know, that is already a line item, the college gate. So mm -hmm. I believe it's already in there somewhere. So, um, so really, it's just really, what expenses are we using if we have to buy additional cleaning supplies and we don't have the money for the, those types of things they're looking for? You know, uh, overtime for people or, or something that we need to do. Um, those are the expenses they're looking for. I mean, we may go over on the lines we already have, but that also has to be accounted for as well. But she, he doesn't want us to create, you know, a new line for additional things at this point. Here, Irene's typing something, hang on. And are we going to have any further discussion about the green meadow roof here or are we sort of on hold as far as that goes? Did Bethlyn send you that information I got yeah. from? Yeah, I did get the, the letter. So about the timing and what needs to happen if it's going to, it doesn't sound like it would be within the summer. It doesn't sound like it's going to be in the summer, to be honest with you. But, it, you know, if we only do part of it, then this building can be occupied. So that's something we have to look at as the budget subcommittee. Do we want to... Um, you know, do the whole roof, maybe just send out a partial roof again. You know, I think we really need to revisit those numbers at some point. Uh, or do we want to just keep the wing not occupied again for another year? Uh, I mean, those are just some things we have to, to look at. Going by the letter, it sounds like Greg is in support of us keeping our original vote of the 650. Yeah, the 650,000. Right, yeah, it sounds like, and, and maybe pushing the fire station off to the fall. Um, oh, geez. really? Yep, yeah, that's what was in his recommendation. So, um, in writing. So, wow. yeah. So, do we need? Yeah, to FinCom feels really strongly about it too. Yeah. Um, yeah. The problem is, is, is you know, the the uh, occupancy of the building. Right. That becomes the bigger issue here. I mean, can they do this with the students? Um, they could, but the kids can't go outside. Right. So, you know, that will, you know, how are we going to have, you know, men on the roof with little kids running around in the front of the building? So, you know, do we want to- I mean, but we can occupy the building the way it is now. Correct. For another right. year. Exactly. You know, so we could do it, we could potentially, do, and I have not read the letter, so. Yeah, right. And we could <laughs> um, do the following But I think that, you know, if we're, we, which we are not seeing an increase, which I'm very disappointed about, but we can do a better job next year marketing um, spend the year to get the five uh, five day program up and running for the preschool. Um, you know, we don't need the classroom spaces for students at this point. Um, so, so we could put this off for a year if we yeah. needed to. So uh, my question then is because the the um, board of selectmen are meeting again on Tuesday and they want to discuss this. Um, should I? propose to them that we put it off for a year and then we don't even have the town vote regarding the 650 this year. I mean, so here's, this is my two cents having been through all of the things we've been through. Um, I think it is quite likely that if we were to see a structural analysis of the roof, there is minimal replacement that we would need to make structurally um, you know, scientifically 
in order to even occupy that side of the wing. Um, timing wise, if we are now not doing a vote to get funding until the end of June, right. and we are looking at doing construction on that building into the school year, and or spending a significant amount more money in order to get it done, whether it's even physically possible. Sorry about the yelling in the background. Um, <laughs> so we don't even hear it. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> There's some torturing happening. There's a lot of screeching. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> They'll be all right. They'll be fine. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so I think doing the construction in while school is in session is is not going to work. I agree. Um, and I don't imagine that this is something that we can do part pieces and parts of and then finish over breaks. Mm -hmm. So I say all of that with the knowledge of the community concerns that were raised last year and, and how vocal families got about the health and safety that they, they believed we were jeopardizing. Mm -hmm. um, and I acknowledge that that happened last year, but I think in terms of this piece, if we're looking at the needs of the entire community, we don't need to open that side to students next year in terms of the number of students who we have. Um, if we're not going to want them to do the construction while school is in session, I think it is a better use of our community resources to get going on the fire station and then do the roof at some other point in time would be okay. my two cents. I understand, however, that that may not be the, the, the right decision within the community. But I want to know if I can at least propose it to the Board of Selectmen on Tuesday. At least let them know that that is an option that we're willing to consider. I, I think it would be an option because I think our only other option, as Jennifer said, is to allow construction to happen when the students are in session. And I don't think that that is the right thing to do. So I no. think I'm not sure what other option there would be. If by some chance everything's open on May 4th, this may all go out the window. I mean, I truly right. don't see that happening, to be honest sure. with you, because the town meeting is going to be in June anyway. I don't think they're going to change that to make that any earlier. Right. So by the time they put the bid out, that's you know two weeks for that and two weeks for this. There's a month, that's the end of July. That means that people have to come in and start in two weeks. I, I don't know if that's feasible. And that's assuming we can even get people to come in and start when we need them to. Correct. Yeah. So I guess that's my bigger concern. As much as I don't want to say, hey, uh, you know, I, I, but I think we, we managed this year. Was it ideal? No, but I think Jennifer's correct. The um, the population of the students doesn't support that those rooms have to be opened. Right. But if we were going to do that, propose that to the selectmen, we'd have to be adamant that we want it next year because it would yes. help us. Oh, again. absolutely. So well, this I is think we have to because with, with the MSBA proposal, we have to show that we are making these changes to the, to, to the, disc, to the building because they're not going to build, you know, a building if we can't maintain the one we have. So, you know, but again, I'm not sure how that will work out when we worked out that that timeline. How is that going to fit? I think it would be it would I can look at it, but I think it just sort of flips or it, it actually just delays instead of having two um, overrides happening for buildings this spring. There'll be one this spring the plan for the school in terms of feasibility study in the fall and then it would be the roof in the spring and or the roof we could do the roof and the feasibility in the fall which frankly probably makes more sense than doing the fire station and the roof together if we could say we're going to do one vote on the feasibility and the roof then it's one conversation related to the community if we wanted to do that in the fall but we can't do the fees uh, we can't do the roof in the fall because don't you have to spend the money by june 30th and we wouldn't no, I don't do think that. so. No, I thought you did. I thought you had to spend it by the end of the fiscal year. No, because this is borrowing authority. Um, point. Yep. You know, so it's borrowing authority in order to do it, um, which means that they could potentially get in at the end of June, right, and be able to have a little longer period of time. Um, but we could, we could do the, you know, we could just do the override, not the override, the um, feasibility in the fall and then the, the roof in the spring. We could do it that right. way too. Still, I, that, I, was, I was thinking that myself. Perhaps we can still have the feasibility done what, and, and then, you know, and then move forward with the roof in the fall because I don't think one really impacts the other as far as, 
uh, you know, um, yeah, it just makes a better, it, 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 it's like a logical connection between the two of right. like, hey, we're going to authorize this money for a study of what we do with Green Meadow in order to keep the building open until we get, we figure out what we're going to do with it, we're going to fix the roof, you know, like it, it's, it's a logical connection that might, um, might be a, an easier conversation than it would be if we were doing, you know, the fire station and the green meadow roof and then this feasibility study sort of out there and okay. never, never land. So in terms of, cause I want to, I want Mary and I to just be able to discuss this um, at the school committee meeting on Monday. So what you're saying is the feasibility study funding would be introduced at this coming town meeting on the 30th. No, no, oh, no, it would be in the fall. Right. Along in with the, the fall. Roof. Right. Okay. And then the roof would be the following spring. You could do it either way. You could do the roof in the fall with the feasibility study, mm -hmm. or you could do the roof in the spring. Okay. Right. You could split it or you can put it in the same bunch and just start going out for bid earlier right. and then have it ready to go come June 30th. Right. Because okay. sometimes even if you wait till May or, or, or April, it may take them to, to schedule of people, it may take longer to do that as well, because oftentimes that's when schools are doing all of their summer work. So right. April, you know, maybe a little bit late to even get it done. Who, I mean, I'm just saying, I, I'm paying the devil's advocate here. Um, right. So perhaps doing it in the fall would be a better opportunity. So we get first in the queue, we can do at our own schedule and not really have to go around them as well. So that's just a, a thought. I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, um, but especially with this year, you know, you just don't know people are really going to be looking for work and yeah you know and then so are you advocating for going doing both of them then mary jane in the fall is that what you're advocating for or do the fall for the feasibility in the spring for the roofing no i think, I think can, go ahead jen well I think, I think you were saying if we do the the roof in the fall we might get a better right, you know okay. we're going to be at the head of the line and we'll right. get a better deal right. We vote for it in the fall, but it doesn't take place until the spring. Right. Right. What I'm saying right. is we're not going to vote for, you know, vote for the funding for whenever that happens. I don't think this roof cannot be done in the fall. Right. You know? right. But I think we first in the queue, listen, maybe the mayor is putting out your bid. Where can we do this? The first day of school is due over June 19th. We're going to start June 20th instead of waiting till, you know, mid July because somebody else got ahead of us. Yeah, That's just what idea. I'm thinking. I don't, I mean, I, I'm not a construction person, but I, that's kind of the earlier you get the jobs in and you get a little price to be honest with you. Yeah. Yep. No, that sounds okay. good. Yeah. All right. I mean, I don't want to, you know, I know that people are very worried and they want the roof done and, and it's, it's unfortunate that this situation is what it is. Um, but we really have to, I, and I, I think it's, it's, it's yeah. disingenuous yeah. to say we want to do the roof but then not allow it to be done, you know, until the next summer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's fair for us to say, like, look, here's, here's the timeline that makes sense to get this done. Um, and and who, to be honest with you, who's to say, I, I, I know, again, who's to say that they're even going to be able to do this stuff in the summer? Right. Who's to say we can even, I don't even know how long, it, I'm hearing this may go till October, some yeah. of the, these social distancing things. Yeah. So, you know, we just, we just don't know. And it's really hard to explore the unknown and make plans. It's just really, right. really hard. Yep. Okay. So I, you know, I will have to see what the, you know, the town wants initially, but uh, you know, I, I think as Jennifer says, and, and I, I kind of, I'm, I'm behind her on this and I think really waiting is the, is the most opportune time. Yeah. Well, see, here we go, Irene. Nice answer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. yes. Yes. Just read to everybody else what Irene says, because she said, in the companies we backed up making up for projects that they had to put on hold during this whole epidemic. So exactly. that's a good point, yeah. Irene. Thank you. So right, we may not even be able to get it done anyway. Okay. All right. And I'm, so Mary, I'm so you glad that the town is willing really to move forward with that. Mary, you yes. comfortable having us discuss this at the yeah, school I committee? Think it, it makes perfect sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like it a lot. And yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, 
Honestly, I haven't had a chance to take a look at that budget piece since, since we've had the last meeting. So I think it's something that Jennifer and I are gonna to have to really take a look at to just revisit it. I wanted to look at it before the meeting, but we didn't get a chance to go line by line. We're talking about before everything happened. Yeah. 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 Well, it sounds like we're being told to just stay where we are. So what we talked about is what's gonna happen. I just have to refresh, I have to refresh my memories before I say anything else because I'm not, I have to go back to see what we put in there because it's been so long, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I do think we'll have to start posting at least for the, the retirement position, you know, uh, the science position. So we'll have to get going on that. Um, and then the rest of them will have to, Jennifer and I will have to sit down and, and decide how we're going to, to bring this up and maybe at our next admin meeting we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's all I can think of right now. I know that we talked about the feasibility. I haven't heard anything from MSBA, to be honest with you. Some of the things they've talked about yeah. from MSBA has been um, delaying people's um, initial, um, what's it called, SOI, statement mm -hmm. of interest. Um, but I haven't heard anything about moving um, anybody else's timeline. To be honest with you, I still think people are moving forward on the regular timeline they've, they've established. I, I've heard this. Yep. I've heard some. I've heard some, some people still going out doing what they have to do because some of this work is architecture work. They can do that without having to go out. So I think some of this work is happening. Um, so I don't, I'm not sure our track will change very much at this point. But Jennifer, have you heard anything on that? Mm -hmm. I have not. <laughs> I know a few guys have. Yeah, I mean, have you heard anything about that changing? The root. Okay. No, I have not either. Um, so it comes back to bottom line. I Irene, mean, do you have anything you want to talk about about budget? Are you concerned about anything moving forward? Uh, yeah. I, I just want to revisit again, sorry to keep honing in on this, but the 10 month and 12 month building admin. Um, <clears throat> Kevin Caruso is 10 month position. Yep. Yep. Okay. And are we still going ahead with making him full time and then Doing a separate athletic director? Yep. Okay. As a stipend we, position, we are not hiring a person. It is a stipend position. Okay. Um, so currently, okay. yes, that is the plan. That is the plan. All right. Um, so if we do have to cut funds, is that something that we would take a look at maybe not changing? Or is this... I mean, we can, but it's about 11 grand. And we yeah. had budgeted, I think, 12 grand for it. Um, because we believed we would be able to get someone for the stipended amount. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's, to be honest with you, I don't think that's a, I don't think that that would be, I mean, to be honest with you, um, we'd have to find other ways to do that. Those administrative positions would, are, are very small, unless you give, like I said, a whole person, the positions themselves are, are really minimal. And has um, leadership and operation uh, principal been notified of the 10 month contract? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But that is going to happen? It will happen, yep. Okay. Um, and in your discussion with um, Rob Rolu regarding um, what he may what supports he may need down at green meadow and um working all of that out is is having jen move her office down there or being down there part-time still part of a consideration for that it is yep. okay all right and that and that's initially how we had approached that to be honest with right. you lydia you know having so, jennifer down there as the additional support is something that we are thinking um which was a way that we could bring that other um, that other position to be part of that as well. Okay. So that was initially our thought. So would it be full time or part time? Because I think Brian's going to need support also. I mean, I can maintain a desk in both spaces. That's not a problem. Is that? Are you sure that wouldn't be? That's not. I mean, I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just saying, is that a consideration? <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. I mean, the reality is that I'm not in one building anyway, um, yeah. in terms of that piece. So, um, you know, sort of having a main base and then heading over um, to the main office, the central office when needed. Um, you know, it's what I do now when I go to Green Meadow and I go to the 
high school in terms of meeting with principals and um, doing observational walk, not observation walks because I don't observe, um, right. Right. but walking around with the principals. Okay, all right. Sounds good. Um, I'm just going to say that it this I would not be in favor of this being a long term solution because I don't want anybody. To oh, no, I agree. Because we did it a long time ago with Don Holmes and nothing got accomplished. You can't yeah. have a part time curriculum director. No, I think just now because we've got so many new people just and saying. we've got the Green Meadow roof construction and whatnot. I, I would only see this as being for a year. You also, I mean, in terms of this, we need to be aware of what potential revenue impacts are going to do to school budgets. And I yeah. think that that is something that we need to pay very close attention to. Um, because if you remember back to what happened after 2008 or what happened after 2001, it was the private sector first and then the public sector had significant impacts. So just um, keeping that in mind. Yep. Yep. Yeah, again, and, and I think we'll be okay this year, but again, I think next year is really where you're going to see the impact. I think this year, um, everybody will get covered, but I think in the long run, the following year, um, everybody's going to have to make that deficit up somewhere. And I think that's where people are going to start seeing significant changes, um, the 21-22 school year. I, I definitely see that across the board. So it has to really be um, streamlined. Um, and I we're pretty streamlined now, to be honest with you. So there might be a lot of... Um, uh, things that we need to start doing with uh, job sharing and 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 things like that. Um, um, it is a very small district, so it's very unfortunate that a lot of people wear many many hats here. A lot of bigger districts have yeah. a lot of people that can do many different things, uh, but in Maynard, that's not the case. I mean, we are certainly not top heavy anywhere. Um, I know people think we are, but we, you know, by law you have to have a business manager. By law you have to have a curriculum director. By law you have to have a superintendent. You have to have, you know, you have to have these positions, um, mm -hmm. you know, so, so there's nothing that you can do to, to not have these positions. I and mean, we don't have like a human resource director. We don't have a lot of other plate things that other districts have. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we are pretty, pretty lean for the most part. I mean, uh, I, I can't imagine what we would cut, to be honest with you, you know, I mean, you can cut a position, but you'd have to make it up some other way. Somebody else would have to do it. Um, there were two teachers, the health, I think health teacher, health and wellness, and the Spanish teacher at Green Meadow, and you guys offered them um, other positions in other buildings. Is that correct? Uh, one is a position within the current building, and then the other one is a position um, in a different building, and that was going to take place um, March 14th, I think. <laughs> It did not happen yet. Oh, so they haven't, they haven't been. Nobody's been, everything's been on hold because no, it's, we were here. One conversation okay. has right. occurred. I That's had a conversation it. with one individual, um, but there's some other components. This is why there's such a holdup on stuff. Right. So we still don't, we don't know if they're going to accept those positions or. If, no. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. And that could impact the budget as well, because if indeed they choose not to, we could maybe hire somebody else at a, Decrease, maybe. I mean, I <laughs> just 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 put it out there. <laughs> you could be could be hopeful. <laughs> okay. You know. So yeah, this that's is this is our next piece to move on. I mean, we got really sidetracked trying to get these remote yeah. plans in place. Thank so a lot of this. Anyway, thank you for all you had work on that. Yeah. Well, yeah. This three week time frame has really, you know, really put a lot of people off track. And to be honest with you, I didn't know until yesterday what the budget looked like. So thankfully. You know, even then, what was I going to do? I couldn't have any conversations when I didn't know right. what we had to move forward with. Yeah. So, so thankfully, yeah, that's that's a start. Um, I do know that even the town itself is just going to move forward with the budget that they have because, again, everybody was asked to come in pretty low already. Right. Yeah. So you know, and I, that's why I think the impact on the budgets are really going to start taking place come January next year. You're going to start seeing. Um, significant um, issues when the recoveries by then I'm assuming the recovery will be over. <laughs> but who knows so that that's what we have so you're going to talk about the roof on Monday yep we'll talk to about at school committee yep mm -hmm. okay. that plan and then we can say budget is as usual yep. um, 
And hopefully, I would say if we can have a budget meeting within the next two weeks, I think we should have most of that in for Jennifer. I would think we'd have the conversations had by then. So maybe the next two weeks, we can have another budget subcommittee and have the have all that information lined out so that when we have the following school committee meeting, which I would think would be probably right after April vacation, we could have that in place and be ready for May 1st to, to do what we need to do. When do we make a decision about April vacation? We or, uh, yeah, we're doing that Monday. Monday. Okay. Um, has there been as good of a response from the staff as there has been from the parents? It seems like the parents, are, we've had a lot of response, right? I don't think we've seen the staff survey, have we? I just got the staff survey oh. now. There okay. we go. It, it's pretty in favor of the same as the parents. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. That is, that's good. It's in my email right now. I'm looking at it. Okay, so. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't expect to hear that. So that's, yeah. Didn't expect to hear the results. Right, yeah, it said uh, 76 would like to learn through vacation. 76% Se uh, learn through vacation. 23 want to keep. 23% want to keep vacation. Okay. I'll throw that all in on one document for Monday night too, and put Thanks. it. In. <laughs> my, my fear was that the parents were going to come down resoundingly on one side and the teachers on the other. That so was my that fear. Was, too. That was my fear too. Oh, thank you. No. <laughs> I was like, why are we doing this? I mean, it has its pros and cons. I mean, if we do come back, having those extra four days with the students would certainly benefit the students. It'd be a nice way to close out the year having that. Um, but if we don't, then, you know, that's really, then what's the point, to be honest with you, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. It just really puts a lot more burden on the homes and the, and the teachers and, and things like that. Uh, so six to one, half to do the other. So either way, um, you know, looks like we can move forward with, with moving the April vacation, but we have to vote on that first, so. Right, Irene, I just wanted to say, I saw your note about keeping track of lost in, uh, revenue, so thank you for- Yeah, doing thank that. you for that. In that report, I appreciate that. I think that's gonna help us in a couple of different ways. Better get that microphone fixed before Monday. <laughs> what microphone, mine? The microphone Irene. On, her, on her laptop, Irene. Oh. It doesn't work. Oh, Irene's isn't working still? Yeah. yeah, that's why she's texting everything. Oh, okay. I thought she was just doing that. Just, to, yeah. Just to Irene, you just got one of the new Chromebooks. We don't have them yet. <laughs> on the, um, in they the won't be in Chromebooks, Lydia, is it may take, uh, it's going to, it's backup. Everybody's looking for them. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure when those yeah. will be delivered, to be honest with you. Jennifer? I can give mine up. A month. Jennifer and Adam have been doing remarkable work. Jennifer's been uh, oh. putting her face mask on and her scarf <laughs> and visiting. Sorry to anyone I scared. Yeah. So Jennifer, I looked a little creepy. Yeah. She has been phenomenal getting <laughs> those out. I mean, I think her family's been neglected during this whole time. So no. we're I, all I, doing what we can. can I ask just a side question. The kids that, um, so I know, you know, the teachers are all going to be working on the, the Chromebooks and that with the students, and but there are some students that are going to have to re receive the packets the old-fashioned way, and if they don't have transportation to get to the schools, how is that? Ha Do you need logistics? I'm telling you, I have people from the food pantry that are dying to drop okay. off. Um, so what we've done with the Chromebooks is that Adam and I have been driving around to people's houses, um, went to Waltham, uh, for one of our students yeah. who's living there. Yeah. Um, and then Adam's been getting it to our staff as well. Um, so driving to their homes um, to do that. Um, so we certainly can, you know, that was our plan for distributing the paper copies of anything people need. What I've asked is the CIA principals to coordinate with their teacher leaders um, so that we can get a list of who needs what um, and print those off. So Mary, I can absolutely coordinate with you um, in terms of a pickup and that type of thing. That would be fantastic. I, I have two Chromebook it. chargers I have to get out today. Um, <laughs> they were supposed to go out yesterday, have not happened. Um, and I'm also, I'm sure that the Neighborhood Brigade will help too. Because okay, they, great. Phenomenal. So, oh yeah. yeah, you could have the teachers just tossing Chromebooks out the car with <laughs> That's an idea. <laughs> we can do that like the old fashioned paper boy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, so I think if Jennifer and I and Irene uh, get together really t and we can bring Brian in to take a look at really the budget and just make sure, take one last look at it, contact the CIA principals and the uh, other thing and we'll be ready to go. Um, I think we just need to, I'm still, I don't know, Jennifer, you have a, you remember it all? Probably. What? Your, all that, all those line items in the budget and. Of what we're cutting and reallocating? Yeah. Most of it. Oh, see, she has it in her head. I do not. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I have to get that uh, back in my head again. I, when you put it on my desktop, I'm like, oh, okay, I remember this, but I had to. <laughs> so, so I'd like to schedule one in two more weeks, another budget meeting. Um, that way we can really... Pardon? Want to schedule it right now? Sure, why not? Time. First, guys, first, did you see Irene's note about the lawn signs for seniors? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw an email on that. What about them? We needed $1,800. We have over 2000 now, right, Irene? Oh, that's wonderful. I know I sent my donation in. Yeah, that's great. That yep. is great. That is, for, and they said that the extra, if anything's left, it's going to go, I forget, to, there's purpose for it, to the class or something. Yeah, that's the next thing I'm working on. I don't know how we are going to do graduation. I am agonizing over the graduation and prom for these poor seniors. I just don't know what we're going to do. You know, it's so, so difficult. I, I just... I saw a line item in the warrant for invitations in that, so things are at least moving as if we're going to have it at some point. Um, I'm thinking we could have an alumni field. We got that huge field. We've only got 90 students. They could be six feet away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> we can work this out. So <laughs> maybe the students can go in six feet apart and we can all watch on the screen. That's what I'm figuring. Exactly. We'll put tape all along the <laughs> alumni field. We need, and we'll have this, we'll have everybody that's speaking in the middle of alumni field. I think it would be perfect. So we got to give them a graduation. Uh, did so everybody did everybody see the students at the high school and the video that they sent today That's to the teachers? So nice. It was very, a third one. It was very, very cool. Yeah. yeah. All good. So we got to do something great for these seniors. Yep. Yes. So. Um, so town meeting is, has been scheduled for Saturday because they want to have it outside because they want people to be able to come in person, but still be distanced. And so they're talking about having it either in alumni field or in the Fowler parking lot and people just stand um, six feet away from each other per the markings on the, for the, you know, the parking line division. So that, um, interesting discussing the logistics of that. Well, I, that was a topic of conversation at my last round table for the, um, um, for the Middlesex superintendents and uh and i do not think that may happen a lot of they had a lot of backlash from i want to say the state on that oh really that was somebody put that as a suggestion but i'm not sure the state is going to allow that to be honest with you so um even though they made that i think it was put out there and everybody kind of jumped on that bandwagon mm -hmm. um, but i'm not sure how it's going to work so i think that there's yeah. kind of pushing back a little bit on that decision um but again, we have a virtual town meeting. They were there. That's what they're actually looking at. To be honest with you, Lydia, when they talked about that, they talked about ways to create virtual town meetings, and I think that's really more of what they're trying to do. I think people are still worried about the social distancing in June, yeah. um, and uh, and I think that's something they're looking at right now. And that's that was just a, a only one group of superintendents. It doesn't in no way does this represent the state or anything. It was a group of ten superintendents talking, and that's what you know two people said. So right. this is really just here at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so that's what I heard, and because it was it was the same. It was the very next night after the town meeting, and I said, "Oh, we're doing that in Maynard," and they're like, "Well, I'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not." I was all excited. We we're ahead of the game, but maybe not. <laughs> yeah so all right well, that I, was it so do you want to look at your calendars yeah, yeah. i'm free yeah. it's so busy and packed while well, mine is i can't i know you guys are busy but i think once monday hits i think we will be able to hit some sort of groove to be honest with you i th i think i'm hoping i think this last three weeks have been just a whirlwind of trying to just you know negotiate get the plans out get to the teachers make sure to calm everybody down and let everybody know it's going to be okay we're going to get through this i think once everybody has some sort of plan in place keep our fingers crossed the teachers now are going to have uh, faculty meetings they're going to have team meetings they're going to start connecting with each other all these things i'm hoping now we continue to focus on way to you know work on the budget look at the summer programs look at how we're going to open up school next year look at graduation requirements look at you know 
um, how we're going to put credit in, in for the seniors. You know, transitioning from Fowler to the to, to the high school, from Green Meadow to, to to Fowler. You know, we these are things we need to start working on. I think everything else says. I feel that we're on good plot. I just I feel good about what's what Jennifer's been doing. How's that? And you. Don't You've been that. doing a ton. No, yes, I have not. Absolutely. And also, I screwed up the our latest communication, so now I got to fix it. Did you send it out? No, because so, I messed up the PowerPoint. Okay. So and <laughs> PowerPoint, I, we've spent a week and a half working on. <laughs> here. So just another sideline. So, and I know everybody's experiencing the same thing, but our seniors are okay with what they're going to have available as far as grades and all that to go on to college in the fall, right? The we colleges are being very, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, accepting of whatever people put on there, to be honest with you. Um, understanding that wherever they are, whatever grades they've got, it's not going to jeopardize them at all. Okay. Yeah, and I think that a lot of them already had had their acceptances prior to that, like in, in all that stuff has been in. So I think at this point, they're just going to really focus on what happened before that time. Okay. Um, and I think I know one of our students just got, um, I just got something from Charles, he sent us something. One of our students got a scholarship to where, do you remember Jennifer, where? Franklin, Franklin Pierce, maybe? Yeah. And he got in criminal a, justice. Yeah. Yeah. And it got a good amount of money. So the colleges are still moving forward. Um, to be honest with you, I think the colleges are worried that kids aren't going to want to stay there. Oh, interesting. Huh. So, so yeah, again, Irene, the kid there, because colleges are happy to start filling their seats. I'm sure. <laughs> Okay. All right. There's something I've just been worried about for them. Yeah. I, and I know Holy Cross has sent some things out because I do know that for a fact, um, even my own kids, um, a couple of their, um, my oldest, my middle, my oldest is graduating, but my uh, youngest is, um, they said they're, um, giving them more leniency with their classes and, uh, stuff is getting incomplete so they can find out that they're giving him additional time to get stuff done. Cause he's, you know, he's in the airline program. So, you know, he can't fly a plane right now. So, you know, so we're doing those kinds of things. So the colleges are really trying to be forgiving. That's great. But I don't think we have too, too much to worry about in that respect. Most of the stuff kids have had in was well before March. So that's that. Jennifer's the still working. Seniors don't work. do anything the last two months of school anyway. <laughs> we, I'm sure we do have some kids who, who may receive conditional acceptance and things of that nature. Um, and so colleges obviously are aware of that, of where we're at. But I will tell you also that the faculty and staff at Major High School, um, we've talked significantly with many of them over the last couple of weeks, are very aware of the implications that um, this could have on students and, and are going to work incredibly hard with students to make sure that, you know, the school closure doesn't damage any anyone's chances, um, both for our, our current seniors um, and our current juniors as well, um, yeah, because that's a consideration too. So they, they are very cognizant of um, understanding that this, we need to be really careful with um, how we work with kids right now. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary for this for the seniors so much. I think it even for the sophomores, GPAs, any kid mm -hmm. that's in high school from grade nine to grade 11 right now, I think that's where we're going to see the biggest impact. The seniors, like I said, are pretty, pretty good. Um, for the most part, but again, as Jennifer said, maybe the young, the ones that are unconditional. But other than that, I think it's going to impact everybody else um, the, for the next three years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about that piece of it. You're right. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So Monday, where are we? Oh, I'm on, on a Monday. What did we say? Two weeks. So two weeks from two weeks from today. Is that what we're talking? Which is the 24th? I'm going to be running the Boston Marathon that day. Oh, they changed it to November. Okay. September 14th. <laughs> so you get, they did it for you so you'd have more training time. <laughs> I'll run it with you. Okay. <laughs> you guys figure out whatever works. You guys are the ones with the busy schedules. Um, let's, can we not do it on a Monday? Yep. Because that means Jennifer and I just have to work on it on a Friday and I would rather not do a Monday. You pick um, it. I don't know, Jennifer, are you going anywhere next vacation week? Nope. <laughs> How about you, Irene? Are you going to be around? Okay. <laughs> so can we maybe do the um, 21st, maybe a Tuesday? That works. Sure. Yep. What time? Afternoon again? Sure. That's good. Sounds good. Yeah, that's good time. Okay. So three. How are you writing that down? Same time is good. 3.30 was good. I liked. 3.30 is perfect. Yep. All right. 
That way I don't want to stress out on a Friday trying to get this done through the weekend if we have, <laughs> gives us a little more time. Yep. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so we will see you all on Monday night. I got it in my calendar. Seven o'clock. It's at five o'clock. Oh, it's at five. Oh, that's right. I'm so glad I just said that. As you're right. Okay, I will be there. I promise. <laughs> it does say five p.m. School committee question mark. So I would have realized it. <laughs> yeah. So five o'clock, and then really, it's just going to be about, um, um, like you said, the Green Meadow, taking the budget as usual, and um, and then the April vacation. vacation. I think that's it. I think that's all that's on there. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. ladies. Enjoy your evening. Thank and you so much. Happy Easter, I guess, to everybody. Same. Happy Passover to anyone yeah, sharing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All and right. Brian, at some point, I need to connect with you. So maybe uh, me you and Jennifer can have a meeting at some point next week, too, if that's okay. Yeah, that's good. I'll send you, uh, I'll send you an email reminder. How about you send us an invite? I'll send there you an invite. Know. I don't know your schedules, but I'll be glad to send an invite. Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll schedule something. We'll All right. work around you. All right, I'll send you the invite. <laughs> All right, thanks, Brian. Thanks, everyone. Have a good Bye. weekend. Bye -bye.